Nesta Gibbs here with TheBoxingBoys.com in association with FightHype.com with Keith One Tom Thurman. Obviously, with Earl Spence uh, having this Manny Pacquiao fight, um, you know, the talks of you and him are kind of irrelevant, but I still want to touch on it because he seems to get a lot of credit for the things that you've done, and uh, there seems to be a narrative that you've avoided him. Um, so I want to walk you down memory lane and see if you can ever make sense of fighting Earl at the time that he was calling you out, and can you make sense of why you know, at that time you turned it down and, and, and you, you feel why, why doesn't he want to give you an opportunity for something you did so long ago when he, you know, you obviously wouldn't have gotten the minor, amount of money, neither would he for, at that time had you took him. You know, yep. the fight is worth more today than it was yesterday. Yes. So, I don't know, I just want to hear your side of this, why you didn't entertain Earl. Um, and, and, and if there's any message for Earl, because he seems to be stuck on not fighting you, and uh, you're still one of the best welterweights of this era, and it makes mm -hmm. sense for him to fight every one of his era. Yeah. So, I'll give you a little bit of the real backstory here. And it goes, I think the night it happened was Porter Broner. I think the Porter Broner. Las Vegas. Las Vegas, MGM Grand. Um, June, I believe. Errol Spence somehow was on the undercard. He was fighting that night, got a W, probably a stoppage. Versus Ended the up, Canadian welterweight. Oh my God, what's so his You name? know the history more than me. I'm not trying to get every detail. <laughs> so on that night. Phil LaGreco. When, when he got that W that night, you know, they, they started to talk to him after the fight. And for me, this is how I look at it. A little birdie named Floyd told him to say my name. Why? Well, there's multiple reasons why a fighter in his position at that time would call up a fighter that's already in the limelight, right? Um, but to me, there was a lot more than that. And what it really was about was changing the narrative. So. Right now, we're talking about the narrative of Thurman, uh, EJ, and, and what's all happened. But before Thurman, EJ, what was Thurman's narrative? Thurman. I was on Floyd's back. Okay? After I defeated... Orlando Laura. Not Orlando Laura. That was After, the first time you called him out. That was the first time I called him out, but that didn't matter. That's my first day on HBO calling out the world. I called out the whole world, you know, run that back. I called out the whole world, right? So... But what happened was when I fought Diego Chavez, I became the interim WBA champion. At the time, Pauli Milanagi was the current champion who happened to lose to Adrian Broner, who happened to lose to Marcos Maidan. Now, I'm a mandatory for this belt, but whoever gets this belt keeps losing their next fight, which doesn't a lot enough time for a mandatory to get mandated, okay? The time has the allotment of time has not been there so that I can mandate my mandatory towards any one of these world champions. First world champion, Paul Milanaj. Second one, um, Adrian Broner. Third one, Marcos Maidana. We all know what happened to Maidana, Floyd Mayweather. So after Maidana, Floyd two, finally, if someone's had the belt long enough, I can issue a mandatory. My mandatory would have been geared towards whom? Floyd Mayweather. A few months go by and I get the phone call that Floyd is now the super champ and I'm the regular champ. And regular champs fight mandatories and super champs don't fight mandatories. So all this calling out Keith Thurman happened somewhere in between me getting elevated before I got elevated to regular champion. Because it, people like you were starting to go to Floyd and say, what do you think about this kid, Keith Thurman? And he's like, oh, he, he green. Oh, this, that. And he kept pushing me off to the side. So to me, when, when EJ first said my name, he ain't say my name. It wasn't you. It was something somebody else told you to do. All right? It's like, sir, yes, sir, you listening to others. It didn't come from your heart. You know what I mean? And how do I know? How do we know this, Keith? Well, look back at that old fight reference when he first said my name, and before he said my name, he said Floyd's name. He said, I want to call out Floyd Mayweather. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. I mean Keith One Time Thurman. Like, bro, 
Bro, why didn't you just call out Mayweather that day? You want to go for the top? Mayweather was still active fighter. Why don't you just call out Mayweather? Like I said, man, I thought it was very deflective. The boy was only 16 and 0. Uh, and I always thought that there would be a great opportunity to face him one day in the future. Um, but why would I look down when I was trying to get a Floyd fight back then? I was trying to get a Pacquiao fight back then when I was 26 years old. You know what I mean? 26, 27. I was trying to make those fights happen. You know, and instead I had to take what was coming to me, which was ended up being Robert the Ghost Guerrero and all these other fights um, that I ended up getting. So, you know, he went through the trenches. Once when he got the WBA from Brooke, I saw him as a real champion like he was. He deserved it. He had a tremendous performance. I was cheering for him. Why? Red, white and blue. He went overseas and got that belt. I'm very proud of him. You know what I mean? You know, I can hate, but I don't really hate, man. I, I know this game. I know this struggle. I appreciate the work every fighter puts in, you know, to make this industry what it is and as exciting as it truly is and truly can be. We need fighters like Errol Spence to fight fighters like Keith Thurman. We need that, you know? But we also need people to know what kind of fight it is when it is, right? You do that fight early, people ain't going to fully understand the magnitude of that fight. You know, my whole objective, beat Pacquiao, then it would have been Thurman Spence. You think Pacquiao got defeated, that Spence would be fighting Pacquiao in this moment? No, he wouldn't be fighting Pacquiao in this moment. So that falls back on me. That falls back on me. That's my mistake. I allowed this door to open. I allowed him to do this little... Oh, what? We're getting through the welterweight division. And as we get through, we just, oh, we don't, ah, pull that corner. That, ah, we don't need Thurman. Ah, we don't need Thurman. Sh -sh -sh, we don't need Thurman. Okay. You know, let's see. You know, if that's how he wants to go about the welterweight division, so be it. You know, I can't, I can't change nothing. But I'll tell you another thing. I ain't never get a phone call. I ain't never once in my life got a phone call to fight Errol Spence. And we got the same manager. So don't act like you called me out if you ain't really called me out. You know, that's what I don't appreciate. Because when Thurman wanted Porter, Kenny Porter got a phone call. And then what did Kenny Porter say? Not now. Then it came later. Thurman gets a phone call. Kenny Porter, Sean Porter, they want you now. Oh, bet. Run it. Because I wanted them before anyways. Run it. I got the phone call. When it was time to fight, uh, when the moment Floyd retired, he the WBC got vacated, and Danny Garcia moved up to welterweight, fighting against Robert the Ghost Guerrero for the vacated title. He beats Guerrero. I commentated that fight, and I told Al, I want that boy at 147, you know? Some time went by, let Al know again, I want to fight that boy this year. He called up Danny's dad, boom. Y'all want to fight Thurman? Thurman wants to fight. It's a big fight, y'all undefeated champions, unify. They said, yeah, we want to fight, but Danny's been a little inactive. Let us get a tune up, little, that's when he fought the dude who wasn't even ranked. They couldn't even make it a, a title shot because he wasn't ranked in the top 15, yaze yaze. That's when we did the WWE face off in, at his hometown because I knew like he knew this was a tune-up and right after this it's me you know and we're gonna make a real fight so they got sent the contract they got the phone calls there's a few people at 147 I never got a phone call for never got a phone call for Adrian Broner in my whole career never some people used to ask me in Vegas hey man you gonna fight AB man you ever gonna fight AB never got a call for AB right Never got the call uh, back in the day when I, when I was interested in this, this kind of fight. Never got the call to fight Amir Khan, right? Never got the call uh, to fight Errol Spence Jr., right? But, you know, I thought I was going to be fighting EJ in 2020. It was an Olympic year. He was an Olympian. I was an Olympic alternate. You know, I thought 2020 was a big year. 2019 is when I lost to Pacquiao. The whole goal was to feet pack out, get hand surgery, get right, and then go right after Spence. Why?
because we would be unifying the titles. The, the move that they're doing right now was the move I had intended the whole time. All of a sudden, it's just me, you know, it's not me making that move. That's all it is, you know. So EJ can say whatever he wants. I think it's a whole bunch of nonsense and drama, you know. Uh, how do you fight Sean Porter? How do you fight um, Danny. Danny? How do you fight Pacquiao? How do you fight Bundu? How do you want to see everybody I saw, but you don't want to see me? You know, I'm not following your shadow. He's following my shadow. I'm not following his shadow. Because if I was following his shadow, I'd be on his tail and I'd be right behind him saying, hey, you know, I don't, all I know is when people want somebody, they want somebody, right? When you want a Lamborghini, you want a Lamborghini. I can ask you two years from now, you want your Lamborghini, okay? It don't change. When you want something, you want something. I don't think he really wants it. I think that's the only reason why he can act up like that. If you really want something, it's in that heart. As a fighter, as a warrior, when you really want something, you want something. And, and I want to see it. You know what I'm saying? I just didn't want to see it for no reason, at no stage, with no pay. I didn't want to see that. It doesn't mean I didn't want to see it. I wanted to see it, and I'm a chess player. I saw how the industry was moving. I saw how welterweights were moving, and I wanted to get it to where we line up, and it's, it's a real clash, you know? And I think we can still make it happen unless if he wants to make this fight, unify, salute, and jump out of the welterweight division. If he jumps out of the welterweight division, it ain't on Thurman, it's on him. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll follow him. Maybe I'll have to just tell him, I'll follow you wherever you go. Wherever you go. Why? Why? Because I seek the truth these days. You know what I mean? I'm a truth seeker. I seek the truth. Y'all know I, I cut my hair. I cut my hair. I'm just out here. You know, I'm out, I'm out here in the wilderness in Florida. You know. <laughs> it is what it is, man. Can you answer one thing here when it comes to that? Was there ever a time that you, like, would Al have even entertained you? Did you have the power, the authority to pick up the phone and say, look, I want Earl Spence to be next? And he's like... Well, he's only 14 and no, no, this is who I want. He's in social media, acting like I don't want to fight. This is, could that even happen? Are fight fans assuming the unthinkable, right? Like, could is that it something? Happen? I wonder. I didn't take the initiative to make that happen. If y'all want to call me out on that. Yes, I never took the initiative because I don't have to take the initiative because I get the call. This is going to happen. You know, when I did, when I I never got the phone call like, look, Keith, I'm advising you to do this. But Spence won't stop telling me to get him Thurman, and I just want to know if you'll entertain the fight. I can get you X pay, and, and we'll make it like this and that, and we can make this fight happen. You know, or you can just go fight. When I fought Sean, Sean had more credentials uh, than Errol Spence. But... Uh, I think so, yeah, I don't even think he fought Kill Brook at the time. So when I shot, fought Sean, Sean had more credentials. When I fought Danny, Danny had more credentials, right? So it's not that, like, what, what did I really do? I fought the best fighter at that time. Now he's proven by staying the course, being who he said he is, the truth. He's proven that he's up here. He's here to see everybody. You're here to see everybody. Why you don't want to see me no more?